Okay. Hello, class. Say, uh, say that you've got yourselves a religious icon, we'll say a portrait of the, uh, we'll just say, you, usually icons are in a squarish, never really in the center like that, though. You have, uh, say so you have your three-quarter glance there. Uh, and it's sort of a religious icon. As you'll see, see the power of a portrait like that. I'll say it was a religious icon way, way back in the late uh, medieval times. And you were a painter painting a commission for a church of an embedded icon, we'll say of magic. Embedded means that it had a frame like this and it was a movable object, but, or it was like embedded into the wall. Because at first, what happened is the embedded, there were frescoes, but embedded icons were embedded into the walls and uh, were able to be removed when the iconoclast, uh, there was iconoclastic revolution and they were burning down churches and destroying the, uh, the art. Frescoes were destroyed with graffiti, we'll say, erased, effaced, and uh, during the Reformation. And so what happened is that there were icons of Mary and, and child that survived with uh, reeds. They usually had uh, roses, or reeds around. Uh, that's what that's what the icon itself looked like, with roses around and Jesus and Mary. Uh, sometimes not just squares. Sometimes they were rectangular, and they the icon class actually weren't able to, some of these, uh, Mar there was one in particular, and many others, of Mary and Child, that would, there was at least one that was seen to have a sort of miraculous uh, ability to survive all iconoclastic attacks to deface it, to destroy it, because that was seen as idolatry to the then reformed uh, Lutheran and uh, Protestants, Calvinists and others, that by Zwingli and uh, Calvin and Luther and all that. So it's understandable that, uh, first of all, iconoclasm has existed throughout all of history. Whenever man or woman or anyone decided to paint the picture of a living thing, what happened is that, like you'll see in religious, uh, Islamic religious law, I, I, the little that I know about it is that uh, painting portraits of saints or of Muhammad himself, even a man like me, who's not religious and not baptized or part of any organized religion, to say the name of Muhammad could be seen uh, as a disgrace if I, if, or maybe even a bla form of bla blaspheme. Uh, if I wasn't doing it, uh, like right now I'm doing it before a camera, I'm being filmed. That in itself could could uh, could be uh, could be against the religious law. I'm trying to do it as as well as I can. This is my own work, so, and this is not really an icon. But in terms of uh, what I was talking about, iconic Catholic art. Right now, I'm just going to erase the icon. This is an act of iconoclasm, but it's didactic in this case. So any picture, really. What happened is that these they ended up in galleries. The the Marian child that I speak about uh, was one of the first to be uh, in galleries. And what galleries were was essentially religious art was collected and it became popular and it, it became valuable. People wanted to get their hands on it. So you had galleries, and these uh, galleries had uh, paintings on the walls all sorts of uh, paintings. And each gallery, they ended up having, uh, this was like in Holland and stuff, really different places. They would have uh, tables with all sorts of objects, sculptures and stuff, and paintings on the walls. And each uh, gallery would have a, a catalog of their, uh, of what they had in the gallery. There would be a catalog painting of uh, the entire contents, like you see in the wall. But some of these paintings, it became a style, I guess, or a genre of the catalog. 
of the cabinets of curiosity of a little guy there going in to meet the art dealer, the map, nice desk, and looking at the, cal at the catalog and with maps of the world and globes and all this and uh, paraphernalia, like uh, scientific uh, use of these tables, these paintings on the wall. And there was always there was a discourse within this image of the inside of the gallery. And there was always that, that Mary and child, that famous icon that survived so many church burnings. And uh, from left to right, because these paintings were essentially uh, essentially horizontal, allegorical, and you would have like the Marian child or something, and then you'd have throughout the images, it was like a film, you know, it went across, as you, the viewer, viewed this painting, you saw, you could read a discourse. So that painting was essentially not more, it was more than just a catalog of images but it was actually a form of film using perception in the viewer that could be read like a text, an allegory, maybe saying, who knows, saying something about the origin of this uh, particular gallery, about the, it could be a whole historical uh, art history in one, one, one frame, the entire history of art, of painting, by Cornplasm. That's what I've done.